Offsec just announced some major changes to the OCP certification and I'm here to break it all down for you. In this video, I'm going to share the facts first and then I'm going to share my unfiltered opinions and give advice to those who are aiming to become OCP certified. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I got some juicy information that you can't miss. Hi, my name is Kaiser Clark. I'm currently working as a full-time penetration tester, also known as an ethical hacker. I have over six years experience in the cybersecurity field and I have 13 certifications one of which being the OSCP. Starting November 1st, 2024, the OSCP will be rebranded as OSCP Plus. The biggest difference between OSCP and OSCP Plus is that the OSCP Plus is no longer a good for life certification and requires to be renewed every three years. The good news is that existing OSCP holders remain OSCP holders for life and that will never change. For those who are looking to get OSCP certified, after November 1st, you will become OSCP Plus certified and if you renew it, you will remain OSCP Plus certified. However, if you do not renew it, your OSCP Plus certification falls down to a regular OSCP certification. So essentially, you don't renew OSCP, you renew the Plus designation. So no matter if you already have OSCP or if you get OSCP after November 1st, you will always be an OSCP cert holder for life. And like I said, you only have to maintain the Plus designation and your OSCP regular status is good for life if you choose to not renew the OSCP Plus. The exam itself is also changing and the way it's changing is within the Active Directory portion of the exam. In the past, you started as an outside attacker and then you had to compromise machine and then pivot your way into the internal network. Now you actually start inside the internal network from an assumed compromised position and then you have to get domain admin from within the internal network. And the way OPSEC is allocating points for the Active Directory set is changing as well. So in the past, it was either all or nothing. If you didn't compromise all three machines within the AD set, then you got a big fat zero. Now the way it works is you can actually get partial points and you can get points for the individual machines within the AD network. So you don't have to actually compromise every single machine in the AD set just to get points. And you don't have to get full domain admin to take advantage of points. Speaking of points, OSSEC is completely removing the bonus point option. So if you're unfamiliar in the past, you could get 10 bonus points if you completed 80% of every single module in the course, as well as compromising 40 machines in the labs. If you did that, then you got 10 bonus points and that would go towards your exam score. And now that is no longer an option. And if you're like me and already have OSCP, you can actually take advantage of a deal OSSEC is offering to get OSCP plus. So up until March 31st, 2025, we will be able to take the OSCP Plus certification exam for $199. And then after March 31st, the price bumps up to $799. And you can purchase OSCP Plus attempts on November 1st. So there is three ways to renew your OSCP Plus certification. The first way is to take and pass the certification exam again. The second way is to pass a qualifying offset certification. Those offset certifications that are qualifying are the OSED, the OSEP, the OSWA, and the OSEE. And then the third and final way is through the new offset CPE that stands for Continuing Professional Education Program. And that is going to be announced at the end of this year or early next year. So stay tuned for more information. Offsec has also mentioned that they are considering adding the plus designation to their other certifications. However, nothing is confirmed yet. And Offsec has written a lot about why they made these changes. However, after reading it, I boiled it down to two main reasons. The number one reason is to modernize the exam, more specifically to make the 80 portion exam more realistic and to better represent a student's capability to perform active directory penetration testing. And the second main reason is so that the OFSEC OSCP meets ISO 17024 standards. And if you're unfamiliar with what ISO 17024 standards are, according to Institute for Credentialing Excellence, ISO slash IEC 17024 is a global standard that sets out the requirements for the competence of personal certification bodies and the certification of individuals. And if you're wondering where I'm getting all this information, I got an email from OFSEC regarding my OSCP certification today, 
and this is where I got most of my information, so pause the video and read if you want to. And here is some FAQ surrounding the changes to the OSCP. I will link this in the video description. And there is a second FAQ page regarding the OSCP exam changes. Once again, I will also link this in the video description. And now it's time for my unfiltered opinions. As an OSCP certification holder, I have a lot of thoughts and feelings regarding the OSCP changes. It is my favorite certification that I have. So when they changed it, uh, I didn't really know how to take the news, but after dissecting everything that at first I thought it was um, kind of like a stab in the back, honestly, I really did think that. I'm like, wow, you want me to renew a certification that cost, you know, all this money? And the reason why, you know, I was attracted to Offsec to begin with was because it's a good for life cert, you get the certification, it's good for life, and you never have to worry about it again. Uh, whereas other certification bodies, you get the certification every year or sometimes every three years, you gotta pay maintenance fees that range anywhere between $50 to $150 every year. And uh, they those costs add up, especially as you spend more years in the field. And uh, when, when Offsec announces, I'm like, wow, they're just gonna be like every other certification and they're gonna milk me for all the money that I have. You know, I, Offsec gets a lot of flack for having expensive certifications and expensive courses, but they never milk me. Like they never uh, ask for any money extra after I had certification, you know? And uh, that's what I really liked about it. But now it's like, okay, now you're gonna ask me to pay a very steep price tag and you're gonna milk me for more continuing education credit and uh, maintenance fees. So I didn't really appreciate that at first. However, I understand the change and I think the main driving point, Offsec doesn't admit this and uh, I could be completely wrong here. So, um, but uh, I'm gonna take a guess and say that Offsec did this for their profit margins because why charge one time for a thing when you can charge someone a lifetime for a thing? And that's what it feels like to me. It feels like they're just milking out, you know, all the all the offense security uh, certification holders. So uh, I, I felt like I was a little sad in the back a little bit here, honestly, at first. But diving deeper into it, the ISO 17024 standard is actually a real standard that is um, in high regard and it makes sense to uh, want to be in compliance with that to be more competitive with the other certification. Uh, also, there it looks like they're probably trying to get into the DoD uh, 8570 program. If you're not sure what the DoD 8570 program is, it's basically a list of certifications that meet a certain criteria to uh, in order to work in government. So different positions within the government uh, around cybersecurity and tech uh, require certain levels of certifications. And the OSCP and any offsite cert for that matter was never on that list. And it makes sense to get on that list because the DOD is the highest paying customer out of anybody on the planet. So it makes sense to want to get some of that money. Um, so I can't knock OFSEC for trying to, um, you know, line their pockets up with some more money because that, that is the point of uh, staying in business after all. It could potentially hurt some OFSEC cert holders out there. But it can also really help us out because if it does meet that DoD 8570 standard, then having an offset cert will actually help you land some government jobs because as it stands now, uh, no government jobs asking for OSCP. So um, in a way, I think it's, you know, it's milking us out a little bit as offset cert holders, but in another way, it's also opening up doors for uh, government jobs. And my biggest concern surrounding this is actually uh, backed by historical facts. So. Uh, back in the day, uh, CompTIA actually had good for life certs and uh, the CompTIA Security Plus, for example, uh, used to be good for life. And uh, the government uh, with that DoD 85 standard, uh, they made it to where um, the CompTIA Security Plus uh, good for life was no longer relevant. And anybody who had that certification had to retake the exam and they had to get the one that uh, the CE, that means the continuing education, it, it, it's never good for life and you have to constantly renew it every three years. And if you didn't do that, then you would lose your job because um, you didn't get the, the latest and greatest uh, version of Security Plus. So when it comes to the OSCP, I see that also happening because um, now, you know, the CompTIA Security Plus Good for Life is basically worthless. Like it, that's not good anywhere. And I fear that OSCP is about to become that. So um, I have no problem with with continuing my education and getting more um, education to renew a certification. I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is you know spending fifty, eighty, hundred dollars every year to renew a certification that I've already spent a lot of money on. Um, so uh, I wish um, I'm hoping that 
the OFSEC uh, CE program is cheap and affordable. However, given the track record of OFSEC's prices, I have my doubts. The good news is the changes to the Active Directory environment is much needed changes because, yeah, as it stood, uh, and, and OCP got fair flack for this because the, the Active Directory set in the OSCP was pretty bad and doesn't really prepare you for real world internal penetration testing. That was actually one of the biggest uh, obstacles that I had to overcome, you know, landing my first pen testing position because I would get on these internal networks and I'm just like, I don't even really know what to do. The OSCP didn't really prepare me that well for all of the attacks available to me and I had to learn a lot of things uh, outside of the OSCP certification. So. Uh, the changes to the AD set within the exam itself is a good thing. Now, the bonus points changing, I honestly take it or leave it. I, I honestly uh, don't think it, it really mattered because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, the 10 bonus points, it, it promotes fairness. And it's like, in my opinion, it's like, is it make it, does it make it more fair um, when everybody had the ability to get the 10 bonus points? I mean, like the 10 bonus points you got from doing a lot of lab work, it required a, an insane amount of lab work. And um, I felt like when I did my 10 bonus points, I actually earned my 10 bonus points. I don't think I don't think the 10 bonus points it is going to make it harder, the exam harder. But for someone who truly wants the certification, like the 10 bonus points isn't going to matter all that much. Like, for example, like I, I use my 10 bonus points to pass my OCP exam attempt. But if I didn't have those 10 bonus points, I would have just spent another three, four or five hours um, getting 10 more points in the exam. So really, it just cut down some time in my in my OSCP exam um, because one, uh, once I reach 70 points, I'm like I'm done. There's no point, in my opinion, uh, to to go you know get 100 points or 110 points in this case um, because someone who has 70 points it gets the same certification as someone who has 110 points. So as soon as I reached 70 points, I was like, all right, you know what, I'm done. I'm good. Uh, I, I've got enough here to pass. And then I went and wrote my wrote my report. Uh, but you know if I didn't have this 10 bonus points and I like I said I already spent you know an extra hour two three or four or five whatever it took to pass OCP on my first try because um, you know I use like 15 hours of my 24 available hours so I had tons of time to get to 10 more points uh, I just chose not to because I didn't need it so I don't think the the bonus point thing is really um, that big of a deal honestly you know if, if you really want the certification you're gonna find a way to get the certification it, it, that's really comes down to you're probably going to see an increased failure rate maybe um, and uh, you're definitely going to see uh, more people taking more time on the exam um, but yeah I, I, I think to me it doesn't matter but it makes sense um, to get rid of the bonus points for two reasons the ISO uh, standard you know they they mentioned it on the article but there's no other certification in the ISO standard that uh, allows for bonus points so they had to get rid of the bonus points to meet the standard uh, which makes sense and then they also got rid of the bonus points because um, there's no other certification by OFSEC that allows for bonus points. So every other OFSEC cert bonus points are not an option. So um, it's really just making it uh, more even with the, with the other certifications that OFSEC offers. All right, so now I want to talk about you know whether or not you should get the OCP now or if you should wait for the OCP plus. If you are in this weird spot where like you're in the course and you are about to take the exam. Um, it might make sense to wait till November 1st to take your exam to get the OSCP plus certification But it also could make more sense to take it before November 1st So you can take advantage of the 10 bonus points So if you feel like you're a person who absolutely needs those bonus points Then I would get the certification as soon as you can uh, However, it's probably in your best interest to wait until the OSCP plus designation comes out Because you're in a really good spot where you can get the OSCP plus uh, right, right off the gate and if uh, you don't really care about the plus it's, it's whatever like you get the plus designation for at least three years and if, when it expires then well, well you just have a regular OSCP for people like me it's like if I want OSCP plus I have to take the exam again so you're in a good spot I would I would if you don't if you think you can pass if there's a chance you can pass without the bonus points I would wait uh, past November 1 and take your exam after November 1 but if you feel like you absolutely have to have those bonus points, 
then you should do it before November 1. So that's my advice. For me, part of me wants to get OSCP Plus because the Plus destination is um, probably going to be the new standard when it comes to OSCP and offset certs. Oh yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. I'm not. I'm on the fence because right now I'm working on the OSWA, that's the Offset Web Assessor, and then I also want to get the OSEP, that's the Offset Experience Penetration Tester. And uh, there's other offset certs that I've been pursuing, and I'm not entirely sure if I want to go after OSCP Plus. But regardless of my choice, whether I get OSCP Plus or go get the other offset certs, uh, I will keep you updated and informed on my personal learning journey. And for me, I'm actually preparing for offset to change all their certifications to the Plus designation, so I kind of expect them to. Uh, roll out the plus designation for all the other certifications and i've had a discussion with my co-workers today and uh yeah so there's a lot of mixed feelings regarding this change um a lot of people you know they kind of destroyed the email and they kind of just got a general overview there's actually a lot more information on the website so like i said at first um i i felt like it was a you know stab in the back a little bit i felt like it was uh overall a negative thing but the more i look at look at it and the more i read about it and the more i talk about it i feel like this the changes do make sense uh, there are some potentially negative consequences here uh, but there's also some upsides for us as offsec cert holders and offsec fans so um, it's time will tell if how this plays out, but we will see what happens going forward. And as you can see here in the offsec Discord, the announcement was made. And right now, from the community, it doesn't look good for offsec because, uh, from what I'm seeing here, most of these emojis here on the bottom uh, represent a mostly negative reaction. We see dollar signs, we see money bags, we see crying faces, we see angry faces, we see some laughing emojis. We see some throwing up, and most of these are negative emojis and not positive. We got a clown emoji in there, so uh, most people uh, are not taking this news very well. So uh, it seems like the consensus um, on these changes is mostly negative from the offsec uh, fan and offsec shareholder point of view. What do you think of the OSCP changes? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're looking to become OSCP certified, you have to know my series to success. In this video, I talk about how I passed the OSCP on my first try. And even though the exam's changing, these tips of success are still relevant for your journey and you have to check it out. So make sure you don't miss out.